This is the first in a series of videos about basic concepts of philosophy. I thought we ought to start with the most basic concept of all, namely the concept of philosophy itself. What is philosophy? It's an oddly difficult question. For most disciplines, it's not hard at all. What is biology? The study of life. What is sociology? Study of society. What is astronomy? Study of the laws of the stars, the heavenly bodies. What is political science? The science of politics. All of those have very simple answers. Philosophy is not like that. Philosophy is surprisingly tricky. When I was accepted to graduate school, I called my grandmother and said, Hey, Grandma, I'm coming back to our hometown to study philosophy. She said, Oh, that, that's nice, Danny. What's philosophy? Well, there was an awkward pause. Even though I had majored in philosophy, I was going on a Mellon Fellowship to study philosophy, I couldn't explain in a few words what philosophy is. And so philosophy is not like most other disciplines. And for reasons that I'll explain in a moment, I think it's a little bit tricky to say exactly what philosophy is. We might try by thinking about the word itself. Philosophy is a combination of two Greek words, philo and sophia, meaning the love of wisdom. And so philosophy is the love of wisdom, the pursuit of wisdom. Maybe we could understand if we thought about what wisdom itself is. Well, if you look it up in the dictionary, wisdom is just good judgment. So philosophy is the love of good judgment, the pursuit of good judgment. But of course, what's that? How do you know if you have good judgment? Where does good judgment come from anyway? There's an old joke, good judgment comes from experience. Where does experience come from? Bad judgment. Well, that's one way to get good judgment, to learn through the hard knocks of experience. Philosophy tries to circumvent that and think hard about issues to understand how to make the right kinds of decisions, how to judge well about what to do, about what it's possible for us to know, about what the world is really like. That's another way of approaching the question of what philosophy is. We can think about the main divisions of philosophy. They are typically understood to be three. First of all, metaphysics. Metaphysics is, in most people's view, the most fundamental area of philosophy. Uh, metaphysics what? is the study of existence and being itself. What is the world like? What are the basic things in the world? What is the world really made of? How do they combine to form the rest of the things in the world that we see? What are the different categories of things? What are their properties? Do they have essences? Those what are objects? Do they persist through time and change? Um, what do we mean by identity? Those are basic questions of metaphysics. And they all apply to us, too. So we can ask, what is it to be a human being? We could ask about personal identity. What is it to be this very human being? And all of those are basic metaphysical questions. The second main area of philosophy is the theory of knowledge, known as epistemology. Um, there is epistemology, which is the study of knowledge. How do we have it? How do we get it? Do we, is there knowledge? Um, can we know anything? Epistemology is the study of knowledge. It is asking basic questions like, what is knowledge? Is it possible to know anything? If so, where does that knowledge come from? How do we gain knowledge? What are the methods that produce knowledge reliably? Are there limits to knowledge? Are there things we can't possibly know? Finally, there's ethics. Ethics, which considers uh, morality, right and wrong, good and bad. What should we do? What kind of people should we be? How do we decide? How do we face decisions? about small things, about large things. In short, how do we live? And what, anyway, does life mean? Those are basic questions of ethics. So we can summarize what philosophy is all about by saying, well, it's the study of these questions. What is there? How do we know? What should we do? But that still doesn't tell us what philosophy exactly is. So one way of looking at it is to look at some things that Socrates, for example, said in ancient Greece when he was trying to explain to people what he was doing. One of his most famous statements is this, the unexamined life is not worth living. That's undoubtedly an exaggeration. Surely an unexamined life can be worth living. 
But he's making an important point. Philosophy, in some way, involves examination. It involves reflection. It involves a kind of modesty, a recognition that we don't already know everything there is to know, and that we could be wrong about what we think. It's an attempt to reflect on our beliefs, to think about whether or not they're justified, to try to understand the world around us, to try to understand ourselves and our place in that world. People often say philosophy begins in wonder. Wonder at the world around us, at its marvelous features, at its horrible features, at the amazing and the horrifying things that human beings are capable of doing. Philosophy begins in a sense of wonder and tries to develop, out of that sense of wonder, some understanding of the world, some understanding of ourselves, and how we fit into that world, how we ought to live. Those are basic philosophical questions, and philosophers develop a view of the world based on their answers to those questions, based on reflection. However, that's not really enough. In fact, there's a reason why Socrates is often thought to be of fundamental significance in the Western philosophical tradition, and why some other corresponding figures are thought in other parts of the world to have begun an entire tradition. They not only develop a view of the world, but they begin to argue for it. They subject their views to critical examination. They not only try to show you a way of seeing the world, but then give you reasons for seeing the world that way. That's an important step. So philosophy begins in wonder. It develops a certain view of the world and our place in it. And then it tries to examine that critically, giving arguments, giving reasons in favor of seeing the world that way. Or sometimes giving reasons not to view the world a certain way, not to view ourselves a certain way. Confucius said, the superior person attends to the root of things. From the root grows the way by which he means the right way to live. The way we should live in the world really depends on the nature of ourselves and the nature of that world. To understand that, we have to get to the root of things. We have to dig down. It's not obvious on the surface. We have to get down to the root. Um, there is also the psychological component, which has to do with attitudes and approach, which specifically you know, deals with truth, fundamentality, um, it is a special piety towards um, beauty and the search for truth. So you're considering, I want to know um, what things are really like and what is really going on in the world and also with our concepts and also with human existence. Um, now you might say, well, what's the point? Who really cares? Why bother studying philosophy at all? The answer is not only that it's important to understand. Aristotle says at one point, everyone by nature desires to know. We do have an innate drive, I think, to understand ourselves and the world around us. But it's more than that. One of my teachers used to say, philosophy is the most practical of all disciplines. You might think, really? The most practical discipline? Why? Answer is because we think about philosophical questions and the things that follow from them every day. Everything you do is based on some conception of the world, some conception of yourself and how you ought to interact with that world. And so, how often do you use calculus, for example? In some professions, quite a bit. In others, hardly at all. But philosophy? Really, philosophical questions arise every single day. How should you be spending today? How should you be spending this week, this month, this year, the rest of your life? Those are deep philosophical questions. And answering them presupposes a certain philosophical view of the world and of yourself. So, really, every day, you're using philosophy. You're thinking about what you ought to do. Or if you're not thinking about it, you're living that unexamined life. But nevertheless, there are philosophical presuppositions of what you're doing, of how you're thinking, of the way in which you are interacting with the world and with other people. So what is philosophy in the end? My favorite definition was given by my teacher, Wilfred Sellers, one of the great philosophers of the 20th century. Here is how he described it. The aim of philosophy, abstractly formulated, is to understand how things in the broadest possible sense of the term hang together in the broadest possible sense of the term. Under things in the broadest possible sense, I include such radically different items as not only cabbages and kings, but numbers and duties, 
possibilities and finger snaps, aesthetic experience, and death. To achieve success in philosophy would be, to use a contemporary turn of phrase, to know one's way around with respect to all these things, not in that unreflective way in which the centipede of the story knew its way around before he faced the question, how do I walk? But in that reflective way, which means that no intellectual holds are barred. That is, I think, a good way of understanding what philosophy is all about. Biology, political science, sociology, history, all of those various disciplines give us a picture of some specific aspect of the world. But how do those aspects of the world relate to each other? How do they relate to us? Those are the questions philosophy tries to address. Philosophy is how it all fits together, asking the most basic questions and the questions about how all of those specific aspects of the world fit together, how we form a comprehensive image of the world and our place in that world. Philosophy is really, you might say, to use Seller's metaphor, about constructing a large-scale map where the various disciplines, the various other areas of human inquiry, are really attempts to formulate detailed maps of particular regions. How do those regions fit together? How do you relate one map to another map? It's philosophy that tells you that. Some of you may be familiar with atlases, let's say an atlas of the United States that gives you each different state on a separate page. How do you know how to get from one page to the other? Let's say, wow, we're driving, we're leaving Texas, we're entering Louisiana, where do I go? Well, you need something that gives you a large-scale map that tells you how the states fit together. Or if it's a world atlas, then how countries fit together in the world. That's what philosophy is trying to do. It's trying to give you that large-scale map that tells you how the other maps constructed by various intellectual disciplines fit together. Understanding that is really crucial to our understanding ourselves, understanding the world, understanding how to think about how we act in the world in just the way that understanding how those various state maps or country maps fit together is crucial to traveling across the world.